Hello, world, and welcome to episode 14 of What Does This Knob Do? After the mammoth episode 13, I had hoped that episode 14 would be more relaxed and not so long. The reality was different then. Although I was already aware that the subject envelope generators is not really without. In addition to the classic ADSR modules, there are many variants. And at the beginning there is also something in theory again. To understand what envelopes are, is the already mentioned ADSR model most suitable? In principle, an envelope is a temporal change of a property of a sound from its beginning to its end. The most common envelope affected properties are the volume, a modulation of the VCA, the tone, a modulation of the VCF, and the pitch, a modulation of the VCO. For the time being, I am referring only to the volume envelope. ADSR stands for four adjustable parameters of an envelope. Attack is the settling time, i.e. the time it takes for a sound to come from zero decibel to its maximum amplitude as its loudest point. The longer the attack time, the slower the volume increases. Percussive sounds like drums or piano need a short attack time, strings a long time. After the loudest point, the volume usually drops again to a point where it stays the same for a while. This is the decay time. The point to which it falls is the sustain level. A short decay time with a high sustain level is perceived as a sudden slight change in volume, while the sound is still good to hear. Percussive instruments also have a short decay time, but also a low sustain level, hence the impression of a very short sound. A long decay time with a high sustain level is perceived only as a slight volume reduction, while a low sustain level causes a slow decay. Whereby this is not a real decay, because up to here is the key of the synthesizer still pressed, because that's what we're talking about here after all. The volume of the sound with a keyboard with velocity depends on the keystroke. The harder, the louder. If the finger remains on the key, the volume decreases and remains at a certain level until the key is released. Then the release phase begins. The shorter the release time, the more abrupt the sound ends. A soft finish requires a long release time. With an envelope generator, it is of course also possible to create a sound that ends when the key is still pressed. To do this, it only needs the parameters attack and decay or release. That is, the volume starts at zero, reaches the loudest point, and then goes down again to zero. Some envelope generators also have a hold parameter. This can be e.g. at the end of the attack phase, i.e. the loudest digit is held according to the time set with hold and only then starts the decay. Another variant puts the hold on the side of the sustain. So not only the sustain level, but with a hold parameter, also its time can be set. And of course, envelopes can also be completely different, such as by further attack and decay phases. That's why we quickly forget the term ADSR, 
and stick to envelope generator. The terms linear and exponential we already had at the VCA, and here we meet them again. A linear envelope consists only of straight lines, while an exponential and a logarithmic envelope are actually curves. An exponential curve starts slowly and then becomes faster. In a logarithmic curve it is exactly the opposite. Most envelope generators generate attack decay and release logarithmically. But some can also be changed. Here too you can clearly see that the modules that are to sound analog do not have a primarily linear progression. And since natural instruments usually have very complex envelopes, a sound is most natural when created with complex envelopes. Which does not mean that AD or AR generators do not make sense, because sometimes you want exactly the same sound course. In principle, however, you can use an envelope to modulate everything that should change over time. By modulating the VCF, you get effects like filter sweep, flanger or wah, -wah as well as subtle changes such as piano, brass or strings. The pitch is also often modulated with an envelope to make EG to glide to a sound. So a glissando or portamento or a pitch and roll down as in a siren. An envelope is always triggered by a gate or a trigger pulse with many envelope generators offering different options on how to handle the following trigger pulses. This is called re-triggering. If the impulse is triggered by pressing a key, this is a one-time impulse and the following key can trigger it again, regardless of whether the first envelope has ended or does not trigger a new envelope and the initially generated envelope ends quite regularly. In polyphonic tone generators, there is often an option where a chord cycles through its envelope while a melody line triggers the envelope on each beat. In addition, one often finds the function loop or continuous. With this, the envelope is periodically triggered again and again, even if no key was pressed. This allows an envelope generator to be used like an LFO. A special form of envelope generator is an envelope follower. This usually analyzes an audio signal and creates from the cause of the amplitude an envelope which is used in most cases as a control voltage, i.e. CV. But since there are also usually considerable differences from the usual envelope generators, e.g. not every envelope follower offers the possibility to trigger the envelope, I discuss these in another episode. I think so that the basic things should be explained. I go to the specifics in the individual modules. I had to change my setup a lot this time. For one, there is very little to hear, but a lot to see. So all the modules are running in parallel and all have their own oscilloscope. Here I use the envelope oscilloscope from Submarine because that's what it's made for. The signal from the VCA is played in the first input. To do this an unmodulated sine wave is introduced into the VCA while the VCA is modulated by an envelope generator, creating a volume envelope. So that I do not have to change each time, 
the outputs of all envelope generators run in the module mutes of fundamental so that they can be activated individually. With the help of several SUM modules of ML modules, I summarize the signals and have therefore only the selected envelope generator in the CV input of the VCA. In the second input of the oscilloscope, the pure envelope signal is introduced. So we can see and compare the signals before and after the modulation in the VCA. An enlarged view shows us the oscilloscope top left, where you can see the original waveform. I also look at the ability of the modules to generate a standard envelope. I create these with the ADSR from Fundamental and feed them into the first input of the oscilloscope as described above, which corresponds to the blue curve. It stays constant while I try to remodel with the red curve. Of course, this does not work with the reference module itself, because a change in the red curve also affects the blue one. But is not a quality criterion how exactly a reproduction is possible, but only show how similar or just how different an envelope generator works. As already mentioned, an envelope is started with a trigger or gate pulse. This is done by an LFO1 from Fundamental with a slow rectangular wave with low pulse width. If it is necessary to change the gate length, this will be done by the Elegance module gate length in my setup. Let us now turn to the individual modules. It starts with the ADSR module from AS modules. A simple envelope generator with the four standard phases. Attack, decay, sustain and release. An LED indicates which phase the envelope is currently in. The envelope parameters are adjusted by means of sliders so that the envelope can be detected at a glance. Each of the parameters can be controlled by CV. Next to the gate entrance, there is the entrance retrig. A pulse here restarts the envelope, even if it was not finished. Again, you can see this very well on the LEDs. An output jack for the envelope signal completes the controls. The regulators work very cleanly, as you might expect, and a fine adjustment is possible if you also press the control key. Thanks to audible instruments, mutable instruments, outstanding and versatile modules are available in VCV Rack. The audible instrument segment generator is the same as stages of mutable instruments and it's a lot like an LFO, sequencer, sample and hold or pulse generator. And he can do six things at once because he has six segments. Of course, this also allows complex envelopes with up to six parameters, but also several simple envelopes or an envelope that is modulated by the other segments. Let's start below. The inputs are numbered 1 to 6 as in mutable instruments usual with Indian numbers, but which are very similar to our Arabic numbers, so no problem. Again, LEDs indicate which segment is currently active. Above these are the gate inputs, which basically do not have to be occupied, but with which a segment is selected. A very important point is that this module works from right to left. This means if I want a three-stage segment, I introduce my gate signal at the third gate input from the right. 
an ADSR envelope therefore has four segments and thus the gate signal is fed into the fourth gate input from the right. If the envelope is to consist of six segments, then the first gate input must be selected. The associated envelope is always output at the underlying output. At the other outputs is then always the signal of the respective segment. The third row from the bottom are finally CV inputs, with which the overlying sliders can be controlled. Their function depends on the selected mode, which is selected via the buttons above the sliders and symbolized as a color LED above. Six modes are possible here, in addition to the usual three colors, green, yellow and red, in each case a flashing variant, which is activated by pressing the mode button and represents a loop. Finally, we find over each LED still a tenuverter whose mode of operation also depends on the selected mode. The modes are green, corresponding to ramp, which means that the voltage increases from its initial value to its final value, which in turn corresponds to the initial value of the next segment, and thereby activates it. How long this takes is controlled by the slider or by CV, and of course with a rotary control. In the middle position this is linear, left exponential and right logarithmic. Blinking green corresponds to an LFO. Yellow is the step mode. Here the voltage set with the slider is held until the next trigger pulse triggers the next segment. The knob also affects the course between the two voltages. Blinking yellow is a loop of the segment that can also function as sample and hold. The red LED stands for the hold mode. Here the slider is used to set the level at which voltage is to be maintained in accordance with the setting on the control dial. Blinking red leads to a continuous loop. On the other functions of the module I will go into other episodes, but here we are interested in its function as an envelope generator. Creating a simple ADSR envelope is not a problem. Four segments with attack time, decay time, sustain level and release time specify the color combination green, green, red, green. If you cannot remember what affects the sliders in the different modes, just look at the CV inputs, where you can see green is time and yellow and red is level. With the sliders we shape the envelope. I recommend keeping the knobs still in the middle position, which gives us a linear progression where for reasons of representability I keep the time of sustaining as short as possible. Again, the colors under the controls are a good tool and say very clearly that in green and yellow the shape of the course is controlled and in red the time. But this design makes working with the modules of mutable instruments, audible instruments much easier which I just want to mention. For more complex envelopes, you have to think a little more. Take for example an AH ADSR envelope, so with an additional attack and hold phase. Attack is time, hold is level, so the color scheme is green, red, green, green, red, green. We can see very clearly that the position of the slider does not match the envelope and with the knobs you can further influence the shape. We also see that the course of the second attack phase in this case is linear and the knob affects the time here. This is because there are so called segment rules that govern how segments behave in relation to previous segments. 
as it is called, e.g., in rule number four, if the end level of a ramp segment cannot be determined with the rules one, two, three, this is determined exclusively with the potentiometer. Rule one states that the first ramp segment always moves to the level of eight volts. How long this takes, the slider controls, and of course there the potentiometer. The second rule states that the last ramp segment always moves to level zero. Again, slider and potentiometer affect the duration and the course. Rule 3 refers to hold and step segments. Their level determines the end level of the previous ramp segment and the initial level of the subsequent one. Looking at our example, before the second attack phase, the hold segment, which sets the initial level of the attack phase, and then a ramp segment. Rule 1 and 2 do not apply because it is neither the first nor the last segment. Rule 3 also does not apply because the next hold segment is between the decay and release phases. As a result, the level at which the second attack phase moves is determined by the potentiometer and thus it can no longer control the course. Rule 5 defines the behavior of loops. These are played as long as the gate signal is strong, high. If it falls below the level of the looped area, the following segments are played normally. If the loop is the last segment, it becomes an infinite loop. Rule 6 defines the behavior of step segments within an envelope. Until the beginning of a step segment, an envelope is played normally. The step segment waits for another trigger and then continues to move normally to the end or to the next step segment. If a step segment is looped, we also have an endless loop here. You do not have to remember all that, because fortunately there is a very good quick start by mutable instruments. The link can be found under the video. Even this brief overview clearly shows the versatility and complexity of the segment generator stages. And I'm not even into his use as an LFO or step sequencer, let alone the combination of all elements. Omri Cohn made a very good video about it, and you can find a link to it under this video as always. I will also introduce the other features when it comes to LFO or sequencers. But as with all modules of audible instruments, mutable instruments, I recommend experimenting with it. DAD SRH from Bog Audio and its Plus version differ in that the latter has CV inputs and gate outputs. We find here, except the four usual parameters, Still delay and hold, as the name implies. Delay comes before the attack phase and sets a period of 1 to 10 seconds, which delays the start of the envelope after the trigger pulse has been received. Incidentally, this parameter range has all the knobs with the range of 0 to 1, divided very finely since most envelopes require these values. The hold parameter works only when the mode switch is set to trick. Then an eternal gate affects the duration of the envelope, or the sustain parameter, which, as already heard, defines a level. Therefore, the values 0 to 10 of this regulator also refer to the voltage. The envelope is triggered either by a trigger pulse in the trigger input or by pressing the button of the same name. If it is held briefly, 
and then released, the envelope is triggered once when the cycle switch is set to stop. If this is set to loop and the mode switch is set to trick, the envelope is always restarted. The cores of attack, decay and release can each be logarithmic, linear or exponential. This is selected in each case via the small selector switch below the symbols. The speed of a run of the envelope can be slowed down by a factor of 10 with a speed switch. With a switch retrig, you define the behavior of the retrigger. So how does the envelope react if it has not been completed yet, but already a new impulse arrives? With the setting ATT, the envelope starts immediately at the beginning of the attack phase. In the setting RST, the envelope is completely reset, which sometimes may have the same effect, but if the envelope has a delay at the beginning, it will start before this. The envelope signal is output in the magnitude of 0 to 10 volts at the output ENV and at the output INV the inverted signal with minus 10 to 0 volts. At the end of a cycle a trigger is output at the output end, which is EG for synchronizations. In the plus variant each of the six parameters has its own CV input and all except the hold phase has its own gate output. With all these possibilities, many different and interesting envelopes can be realized. We already saw the modules Shaper and Shaper Plus at the VCA and as promised here they are again. They are very much like the DADSRH modules. The value range goes from 0 to 10. The envelope can be triggered and looped with a trigger or button. The speed can be slowed down. The envelope is output at the ENV output and the inverted envelope at the INV output. And at the end of the cycle, there is a trigger at end output. Also, the CV inputs and gate outputs in the plus version are identical. But as mentioned in the episode about VCA, this module replicates the envelope generator of the EMS VC3. As is usual with the VCA, we have an input and an output for an audio signal. The strength of the output signal can be influenced by the parameter knob signal or, in the plus variant, by CV at the associated input. The output envelope can also be modulated in this way. The envelope itself is always a trapezoid. The time course of the phases is always linear. The phases are the usual attack time followed by a hold phase whose length is defined with the on parameter. This is followed by a decay phase, followed by another hold phase at level 0, which determines the distance to the next attack phase. Due to the parameters and the limited formability, these modules are primarily suitable for percussive sounds. In particular, the ENV parameter and the OFF parameter of the PLUS version are perfectly suited by the CV control. AD is a simple attack decay envelope generator. The value range goes back from 0 to 10 and the course is according to the description exponential, but I would rather say logarithmic. But this can be changed to linear using the button. The envelope can be triggered with a pulse in the input trick. But there is also a loop function here. The two phases each have their own gate output and the envelope is output at the output ENV with 0 to 10 volts. Again, a trigger signal at the end of a cycle at the output EOC can be tapped. ADSR is just that. We have the usual four phases as usual at Bog Audio, 
with the value range 0 to 10. The course is also logarithmic and can be changed to linear. The envelope is triggered with a trigger pulse in the input gate and in and output at the output out. The BOG audio modules all provide different envelopes for different applications and therefore complement each other perfectly. Why DTMF by Chart Desert is listed under Envelope Generator is incomprehensible to me. He's making sounds like pressing a button on the phone, not more and nothing less. Sometimes I feel like I do it all because of the DBIS modules. They look very interesting and unusual and have no description. Contorno is unfortunately no exception. Let's start with the most obvious. We have four identical independent units here, all of which can act as AD envelope. With range, we set the frequency range, assuming at the top as the fundamental frequency is 10 times at the bottom and 100 times in the middle. With a slider shape, you can determine the course. Left is exponential, in the middle linear, and right logarithmic. The two sliders are for the attack and decay time, and both have their own CV input jack. The envelope can be triggered by a signal at the trick input, or with a button next to it. The envelope can be looped via the button cycle or the corresponding button, so that the external trigger is not needed anymore. The input jack can process all types of signals, including the CV signals of an envelope. So, of course, it's obvious that I connected the output of one with the input of the other segment. The result is definitely interesting, but not a regular 8 segment envelope. But plenty of room for experiments, especially with audio signal and different settings of the range. Different sound effects can be realized. The application range goes from oscillator via LFO to filter. Just try it yourself. The modules of DHE are something very special and must be considered overall. In principle, it is possible to generate any form of envelope with it. You just have to know how and luckily there is a very good guide on the GitHub page of the developer with numerous examples. The heart of the system is stage. With level you choose the final level of this section of the envelope in the range of 0 to 10 volts. Using stage as attack, this is the level at which the voltage goes from 0 to maximum. Curve defines the course for of the phase. Here you can infinitely overlap between exponential, linear and logarithmic. Where on the left is exponential, linear in the middle, and logarithmic on the right. Duration controls the duration of the envelope segment and, of course, the slope. The module has three inputs and outputs each. Defer is only needed if modules are concatenated. Then the output signal from active comes in here. Trick is the usual trigger input socket. In the chaining here the signal from EOC is introduced. A signal in the IN input sets the voltage level at which the envelope starts. If linked, this is connected to the OUT signal. ACTIVE always has a 10 volt signal. At EOC, a short 10 volt trigger is always generated at the end of the phase and out outputs the signal from that phase.
A simple envelope is already possible with one module. But only a trigger pulse must be introduced and the desired level set. You already have a simple attack hold envelope. And I almost wanted to point out again the missing CV inputs. But there is booster stage, which offers exactly that. All three parameters have a CV input jack here. In addition, the level parameter has a selector between a unipolar signal 0 to 10 volt and bipolar signal minus 5 to plus 5 volt. The parameter curve can be in addition to the usual simple curve shape, referred to here as J, also be two folded here referred to as S. And the parameter duration has a switch with which the duration can be shortened or extended 10 times. The middle position 10 corresponds to the duration in stage. 100 is slower, 1 is faster. Defer, Active, Trick and EOC also have a button with which they can be triggered manually. Booster stage is not only stage with CV inputs, but a huge improvement, just a real booster. What is still missing is a sustain module and there is hostage for it. Behind this strange name is the abbreviation hold and sustain stage. It makes sense to summarize this in a module because sustain is just a level that is set with the volts at the end of the previous section and with which the next section begins, while hold also has the parameter duration, with his duration is set. For this there is again a CV input jack and a dial between 1, 10 and 100, which works as in booster stage. All inputs and outputs also work as in the other modules. Somewhat different is upstage and it also has a different scope. Primarily this is about generating triggers. Which voltage is present at the out output is defined by the level parameter, which can also be controlled by CV and which can be set in the usual setting with the uni B switch. With the button and the input weight, a trigger can be delayed because as long as this is pressed or the gate at the weight input active, all trigger pulses are retained. At the trig output, either the signal fed in at the trig input or the signal generated with the trig button is output, whichever is higher. In practice, the DHE modules show up as a true envelope construction kit. They are easy to use once you understand the basics and you can use them to create any envelope you want. A simple envelope or even a more complex one with 6 to 8 levels is quickly created. Why didn't I work so much with it? Ah, I know the color scheme. Honestly, the originals hurt my eyes. So I just blacken the background and it works. Space is precious in the Eurorack world, so the versatile modules are very popular there, as the popularity of multiple instruments, Befaco and Make Noise clearly shows. In VCV Rack we have no space problem at first, but since these modules are just awesome, we are happy about every module that gets transferred. Likewise with mass from Make Noise, which corresponds to VCV Rack Floats by Friedrichs Audio. Floats is chargeable and can be purchased via Gumroad. The link can be found under the video. At this point I would like to thank Matthew Friedrichs, who has provided me with a module free of charge. 
The flip side of versatility is the sheer complexity. So I could spend hours exploring this module and still just scratch the surface. That's why I also recommend the videos of Make Noise and the Wiki by Friedrichs Audio and the sample patches that come with the full version. The slimmed down version Floats PM is included in the full version. The free and extra wide PMXL version is no longer available, which I personally regret. After all, you could thoroughly test the module before buying it. But understand, because if most testers then stay with the free version and do not purchase the full version, this is uninteresting for the developer. Of course, the full version offers much more options than the PM version. Personally, I think it's a pity that it has now been optically adapted to the PM version. I found the original design with the option to change the colors of the big sliders more clearly arranged. Meanwhile, Friedrichs Audio is working on means to change the appearance of its modules just simply editing an SVG file. Well, now I've talked a lot, but have not said anything about a module yet. And anyone who thinks that this is a delaying tactic is right, because this module instills respect in me. And since our topic today is envelope generators, I'm just looking at that and other options in other episodes. Nevertheless, I have decided not to deliver here only a recipe and look at all the controls on. Basically, the module is based on the premise that all elements of a synthesizer are controlled by voltage and therefore they can be influenced by mathematical formulas. Therefore, the elements of the module have fixed properties that can be combined with each other using patch cables. In order to work with it in a targeted manner, you therefore need to know what the individual control elements are doing. Two things stand out at first sight. Floats is symmetrical like its model, with the inputs at the top and the outputs at the bottom and floats has more sockets and is therefore more than just a copy. Somewhat confusing is the numbering of the four channels in the first moment. Channel 1 is the left side of the module, channel 4 is the right one. Both channels have their own attenuator with CV input sockets in the middle. Channel 2 and 3 consist only of these elements in the middle. Channels 1 and 4 can scale, invert or integrate an incoming signal. If no signal is present, these channels serve to generate a large number of linear, logarithmic or exponential functions when a trigger is received or else continuously when the cycle mode is activated. In contrast to the original, floats offers both end of rise and end of cycle outputs for both channels. Channels 2 and 3 can scale, amplify and invert an incoming signal. When no external signal is present, these channels produce DC offsets. Channel 2 plus minus 10 volts and channel 3 plus minus 5 volts. The set voltage can be tapped at the associated outputs. Also an option that only has floats. All four channels have outputs called variable outputs normalized to a mix, inverted and max bus. So that addition, subtraction, inversion and analog or manipulation can be achieved. These outputs are controlled by the four attenuators in the middle of the module, all of which have two inputs, with only the right one is a CV input for controlling the controller. 
and the left one can introduce any signal which is amplified or attenuated by the controller should. This signal can be tapped at the associated variable output or mix, inf and max. This makes floats a versatile VCA, also this feature is not in the original. The connection is cancelled as soon as a cable is inserted into one of these variable output jacks, with channel 1 and 4 additionally having unit outputs, which are not normalized to the mix and max buses. The signal inputs are all connected directly to the associated circuit. This means that they can transmit both audio and control signals. These inputs are for processing external control voltages. Signal inputs 1 and 4 can also be used to generate attack, sustain, release envelopes from a gate signal. These are also assigned to two further inputs, which pause the cycle with a positive gate signal. Channels 2 and 3 are also normalized to a voltage reference so that voltage offsets can be generated without an input signal. This is useful to move a function or other signal that is on one of the other channels to shift the level by adding the offset to that signal and using the mix output. Channels 1 and 4 also have a trigger input. A gate or pulse applied to this input triggers the associated function regardless of the activity at the signal inputs. The result is a 0 volt to 10 volt envelope whose properties are defined by the rise, fall, slope and attenuator parameters. This function increases from 0 volt to 10 volt and then drops immediately from 10 volt to 0 volt. There is no sustain. To get a permanent envelope function, use the signal input. Floats will trigger the envelope again during the fall segment, but not in the rise phase. This allows clock and gate divisions if you set the rise time greater than the time between the incoming clock's gates. The cycle button and the cycle input cause a self-oscillation, also called cycle, which is just a term for an LFO. The rise, fall and slope parameters form the signal that is output at the common signal outputs and at the variable outputs for channels 1 and 4. Rise and fall determine how fast or slow the module responds to signals applied to the signal input and trigger input. The time range is greater than with a typical envelope or LFO. Floats generates functions between 25 minutes and 1 kHz audio frequency. Rise sets the amount of time the circuit takes to reach the maximum voltage. When triggered, the voltage starts at 0 volt and goes up to 10 volt. When processing external control voltages, the signal applied to the signal input either increases, decreases or goes steady. Rise in this case determines how fast this signal can rise. Fall specifies the time the circuit takes to reach the minimum voltage. We've already heard that the signal starts at 0 volt and goes up to 10 volt. At 10 volt the upper threshold is reached and the voltage starts to drop back to 0 volt. Fall determines how long this will take. When processing external control voltages, fall controls the time until the signal returns to 0. Both rise and fall have independent CV inputs for voltage control of these parameters. In addition, or in between, there is a CV input which controls both parameters simultaneously. A positive voltage shortens the entire function and a negative voltage extends it. 
Slope forms the course of the parameters rise and fall infinitely from the right logarithmic over center linear to left exponential. Logarithmic here means that the rate of change decreases with increasing voltage, with exponential it increases and with linear there is no speed change. Floats has many different signal outputs. All are at the bottom of the module. Many of them have LEDs nearby to visually display the signals. In version 0.6.5, the three gate outputs, one greater than two, one greater than four, and four greater than three, have been added and not yet described in the documentation. At these, a 10 volt gate signal is always output when the corresponding condition is satisfied, e.g., the value of channel 1 is greater than channel 2. The difference of the channels always determines the gate length. A useful addition which is also interesting for triggering envelopes. The variable outputs are labeled 1, 2, 3 and 4 and belong to the four attenuverter controls in the middle of the module. These outputs are all determined by the settings of their associated controllers. All these checks are normalized to the mix and max buses. If nothing is connected to these outputs, the corresponding signal is fed to the mix and max buses. As mentioned earlier, a cable in one of these inputs removes the corresponding channel from the mix and max outputs. These outputs are useful if you have a modulation target that has no attenuverter or no inversion is available. They are also useful if you want to generate a signal with different amplitude or phase. EOR out is the end of rise output for channels 1 and 4. In the original only channel 1. When the corresponding signal reaches its highest point, either 0 volt or 10 volt is output. The default value is 0 volt, or low, when there is no activity. This signal is well suited to clock and pulse signals because rise sets the time it takes for the output signal to go high. EOF out is also one of the new options and is end of fall. The function is equivalent to EOR except that the voltage is output when the signal reaches its lowest point. EOC out is the output for the signal at the end of cycle of channel 1 and 4, in the original only for channel 4. This is either at 0 voltage or 10 voltage but the default voltage is plus 10 volt or high when there is no activity. Otherwise the same applies as with EOR. The unity outputs for channels 1 and 4 are tapped directly on the associated channel. They are not influenced by the attenuator of the channel. Patching into this output will not remove the signal from the mix and max buses. This signal is useful if you do not need an attenuator or inversion or if you want to use it both independently and within the mix max bus. Output max is connected to the inputs of all channels and the four variable outputs. It always outputs the highest voltage of all voltages present at the inputs. The attenuators allow the weighting of the signals. It does not respond to negative voltages and can therefore be used to rectify a signal. Useful for creating variations of a modulation or sending CV to inputs that only respond to positive voltages. The output mix out is also connected to the inputs of all channels and the four variable outputs. Depending on the setting of the attenuator, you can add, invert or subtract voltages. This allows multiple control signals to be combined to produce more complex modulations. 
inf-out provides the inverted sum signal, which can be used to mirror modulations. Now that we know what each element does, we may understand the example of an ADSR envelope. We've heard that an attack decay envelope can be generated by a signal on the trig input and an attack sustain release envelope by a signal at the signal input. That means we just have to combine these two, but how? Attack is clearly linked to the rise parameter. Decay and release with the fall parameters. But where do we get the sustain level from? Of course, from the attenuators in the middle. As they produce control voltages, so knob 1 sets the level to which the rise attack phase goes and the length of the sustain goes by the gate length as usual. Now we have two separate envelopes, but we want to merge them into one. Both have an attack phase, so it is natural to regulate these parameters together. Again, the middle attenuators are good for this. At the output 2 is indeed the signal from attenuator 2. If I feed this in both rise CV inputs, I can control with the attenuator 2 both parameters simultaneously. The next train of thought may not be quite comprehensible because we want to unify the envelopes and of course one immediately thinks of a sum signal. But this cannot work because some values would be duplicated because we have e.g. two attack phases. Therefore we must use the max output because this always outputs the highest voltage. The graphic illustrates this. In the first figure we see the summed signals and quite clearly the overlap area. In the second figure we see that the voltage of the AR envelope is output until the sustain level of the ASR envelope is reached and then falls below the value of the sustain and rather reaches the value 0 than the release phase of the ASR envelope. Since the values of the two attack phases are identical at first, the course in the third figure is also possible. In this case, the voltage of the ASR envelope is output until its sustain level is reached and then the AR envelope reaches the sustain level again. For the resulting envelope, it does not matter which of the two variants is calculated. Using floats as an envelope generator is a bit like taking a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Its features are so diverse that it's hard to put it in a drawer. So we'll see it again at the LFOs. But you've probably already seen how complex this module is. Let's get back to Light Affair with a ADSR module from Fundamental. As expected, this is based on the standard again. So we have the four usual parameters that can be controlled by CV. Besides the gate input for triggering the envelope, there is also a retrig input which makes it possible to trigger the envelope again before its complete run. Gradrix ADSR F1 is based on the fundamental module and adds additional inputs and outputs. The inputs here are called gate and trig and as is usual with Gradrix there are seven of them each, whereby there is a separate output and inverse output for each and the middle input is applied to all outputs. Especially the inverted outputs considerably expand the possibilities of this module. The XY pad by JW modules is also an old acquaintance. It is one of the most versatile modules in BCV Rec and can also produce interesting envelopes, but has none of the usual parameters. Here we find instead the parameters x scale, y scale, x offset and y offset. 
as well as speed and mult. Of course, x and y refer to the coordinates of the blue dot. The scale parameters multiply the corresponding value of the blue dot by 0.01 to the far left and 1.0 to the far right. The offset parameters add to the corresponding value of the blue dot plus minus 5 volts. Contrary to usual mathematical calculations, the addition takes place here first. The parameter speed, which can also be controlled by CV, determines the speed at which the blue dot moves. The possible values here are 1 to 10. The parameter mult multiplies the value of speed, but there is no exact specification. In the initialized state, the dot is in the middle of the display. By clicking on it and moving it, you can draw a path to start. The result is always square, even if you draw a curve. Here an optional finer resolution would be desirable. However, exact curves are possible with the two R&D buttons. The left button selects the type of curve between sine, rectangle, curve, line, zigzag, sine wave with frequency change, spiral, and a pattern of straight lines in which the cursor constantly changes the direction. The right button selects a random variation of the main topic. If, for example, you have chosen a sign, the right button generates a random sine wave. For the cursor to move along the path, it must be triggered. This is possible either with a trigger pulse at the gate in input, or by pressing the auto button. Each incoming gate signal triggers the movement again. In auto mode, the path is traversed as long as the button is active. The corresponding values are available at the outputs x and y, and the inverted values at the outputs minus x and minus y. The course of the inverted path can be seen as a kind of ghost. At the gate out output, 10 volts will be output when the motion is triggered or as long as the auto button is activated. In the context menu, which is invoked as always with a right click, the type of movement can be specified. Here both loops and one shots are possible. The generated envelopes are sometimes very different from the usual ADSR envelopes. With spirals you can still achieve the most similar results. However, I also see this module more in the area of unusual envelopes and here it delivers by the random function quickly useful results. Even with NV9 of MSC Hack, the usual parameters are missing but you do not need them if you can draw the envelope itself. Of course, this also means that much more is possible here than a normal ADSR envelope. The heart of the module is therefore the large display, which is divided into 16 equally wide sections. As we see here, there is one point at the beginning of a segment and also at the end of the 16th segment. The X coordinates of the points are fixed and you can move them parallel to the Y axis, whereby there are four different value ranges for this. For an envelope you will usually take the range 0 to 5 volts or 0 to 10 volts, but in addition Plus minus 5 volts and plus minus 10 volts are possible. Incidentally, the value of the y coordinate in volts can be read directly for each point in the module. A small but important detail. Drawing is easy. 
This mode is activated by the button draw. Then you only have to press and hold the left mouse button while moving the mouse pointer over the display. The rubber band slider determines how much a point on the curve affects its neighbors. If you only want to edit a single point, deactivate the draw mode and turn rubber band all the way to the left. In the gate view mode, the curve is displayed as a sequence of equal gate pulses and output as well. With the presets button, you can select ready-made waveforms. Who has seen episode 8 about oscillators will think, at least now, I've already heard everything. That's absolutely right, because the wave morph oscillator has the same possibilities. Rectangular wave, sine, cosine, a kind of mixture of sawtooth and sine, a pure sawtooth, a phase shifted sawtooth, and a pure signal with each minimum, maximum, or average of the set voltage range. Even with NV9, however, it is possible by clicking on the RAND button to generate a random waveform, but also here this looks more like business development. By clicking on Invert, any waveform, even self-generated or random, can be inverted. With the button Copy, you can copy a waveform into one of the nine channels. These nine channels actually correspond to nine different envelope generators, each with its own trigger input and CV output. So that all still stay clean in the basic rhythm, a clock signal is introduced in the input beat, which individually for each channel in the field, time diff, can be determined. Here are one tact and the usual straight dividers 4, 8, 16, 32 and 64 possible. A vertical line symbolizes the scanning of the display. The mode of the scanner is defined for each channel in the field envelope mode. In addition to the old acquaintances, loop, reverse loop, ping pong and one shot. Here is also the mode two shot which corresponds to a ping pong without repetition. A trigger pulse at the respective input restarts the envelope of a channel and the pulse at the input RST restarts the envelopes of all channels. If all envelopes are to be triggered simultaneously there is also a global trick input for this. Each channel also has a button and CV input for a hold parameter. If this is actuated or receives a gate signal, the voltage is maintained at this level until the mode is deactivated. This is of course also possible through another channel of the module. It's amazing what NV9 offers. In my mind's eye, however, I see a super luxury version which has its own CV input with associated attenuators for each point of the curve to dynamically modulate the curve. One may dream. The ADSR module from MSM offers only the usual parameters, but also some additional options that have it all. For the parameters A, D and R, which have a time course, the course between logarithmic, linear and exponential is again selectable. Here this is even infinitely possible, where linear is the default setting and is therefore achieved by right-clicking on the controller. From this position to the left, the curve is logarithmic and exponential to the right. For the sustain parameter, I would have liked a hold controller instead of shape. 
All four parameters have their own CV input. At the end of each section, 10 volts are output to the associated EOA, EOD, EOS or EOR outputs. The signal to trigger the envelope is inserted in gate. A re-trigger before the end of the envelope is triggered by a pulse in trick. For out the envelope is output and for inf the inverted envelope. The additional options make ADSR much more versatile than a simple envelope generator. The ballistic envelope by nonlinear instruments simulates a ballistic curve, in principle a bullet. The trajectory is always in the form of a parabola and depends on various parameters. That's why the ballistic envelope has completely different parameters than other envelope generators. Impulse corresponds to the speed with which the projectile is fired. Angle is the corresponding angle and a gravity simulates the gravitational force that attracts the projectile after firing and thus determines the trajectory. In the initialized state we see a flat, elongated curve when impulse and gravity have a mediocre value and angle has the maximum value. This corresponds to an amplitude of 10 volts. If we reduce the value of angle to the minimum value, the curve becomes even flatter and thus the amplitude becomes even smaller, but does not reach zero. The parameters impulse and gravity always refer to this amplitude. If we turn impulse to the left, the curve becomes steeper and tends to fall off again. Turning it to the right makes the curve flatter and lasts longer. The parameter gravity behaves exactly opposite, i.e. smaller values flatter curve, larger values steeper curve. The bounce parameter with associated switch determines whether and how often the projectile bounces off once it reaches the ground. Turn to the left, we see only a few rebounds and a rapid decrease in amplitude. The further the controller is turned to the right, the lower the reduction of the amplitude and the more repetitions are required to reach the value zero. This is not achieved if in the meantime the curve is triggered again. This is done either via the button shoot or the adjacent trigger input. All parameters can also be controlled by CV and for the intensity of the modulation there is a separate controller. Stata outputs. At the output trick, the input signal of the trigger input shoot can be tapped. At the output CV is the trajectory, so the envelope signal in the range of 0 to 10 volts. The output SIG has the same curve but with bounce off in the range of 0 to 5 volts and activated in the range of plus minus 5 volts. Above all, due to the wide variety of modulation options, the ballistic envelope can generate very unusual envelopes. For the next module, I put the magnification once to 200% because it is one of the notorious micromodules of NISTI. And it's really remarkable what's inside this little thing called EN. For one thing, we have a complete ADSR envelope generator that can be completely controlled by CV. The cores can be both linear and exponential. This is determined in the context menu and also whether the envelope should start at zero each time a trigger is received. The context menu also contains a quick reference guide and you can read off the respective value of the envelope parameters. Here we also see that it can also be used as an attack release envelope 
and a loop function is also available for this purpose. Both are activated in the module by clicking on the respective button. Here we also see a gate button for manual triggering of the envelope. The corresponding input jack processes trigger signals in AR mode and gate signals in ADSR mode. The LVL control adds an offset of 0 to 1 to the envelope. One of the most interesting options is the scale control which shifts the envelope by plus minus 2 and inverts it with negative values. This is particularly interesting with the two underlying jacks, VCA input and output. A signal introduced here is modulated with the parameters of the module and the modulated signal is output accordingly. The output signal can then be used for further modulations. As usual, a trigger signal is output at the output EOC at the end of the cycle, i.e. the release phase. A very exciting and versatile envelope generator that invites you to experiment. 8 Attack Decay is also from NISTI and we've already seen this module in episode 12 about VCAs. That's why today I only look at its use as an envelope generator. In principle, the name already says what we are dealing with here. Eight identical units, all of which have the parameters attack and decay. And you can also choose between linear and exponential progression. And we also find here the parameter scale, which we already had in EN and which works the same way. Each of the eight units has its own trigger input, but also a button tap trick for manual operation and one shots. And with a button looped, you can do without an external trigger signal. On the output and rise, a trigger is output at the end of the attack phase and at end cycle at the end of the decay phase. The VCA jacks need not to be occupied for pure operation as an envelope generator. The envelope signal can be tapped at the output and out. I'll go into the Unity Mix button right away, because as with the VCA, it's extremely important here too. But first, let's look at the global area. For all controllable parameters, there is an additional global controller which acts on all 8 units. Here also attack and decay can be controlled by CV. Also tap trick and trigger input are available globally. I have already mentioned the peculiarities of the global VCA ins and outs in the mentioned episode and therefore do not go into detail here. Important for use as an envelope generator, however, is the global env out output, which does not carry this name, but is clearly designed. The signal here corresponds to a sequence of the eight individual envelopes, or the envelopes activated with Unity Mix. Extremely complex envelopes are possible and I recommend working with a visualization in any case. What I still miss here is the possibility to activate Unity Mix via trigger. This would allow dynamically varying envelopes. Similar but different are the modules 4, 8, 16 attack, sustain, release envelopes. The envelope phases here are attack and release and one on these dependent sustain can be added by deactivating the AR mode, magenta. This and the other three colored buttons are basically the only differences to 8 attack decay and are related to the receive triggers. If busy mode is activated, yellow, the envelope will only be re-triggered if it is not active. In zero, cyan, the re-trigger always starts at zero, regardless of the value of the envelope when the trigger was received. Loop, green, 
automatically triggers the envelope at the end of its cycle. EOA corresponds to end rise and EOR and cycle in 8 attack decay. Both the global unity mix and envelope global outputs are exactly like 8 attack decay. Again, I would like trigger inputs for unity mix. Of course, these modules from NISTI are still great and versatile envelope generators. The DX7 envelope is exactly what it sounds like and it works just as it does in its big role model. At this point, some will be glad that this is so and others shake their heads without understanding. I have to admit I'm more in the second category. In principle, I find the idea to create the envelope using rate and level parameters quite useful. Attack equals level 1 and rate 1. Decay level 2 and rate 2. Sustain level 3 and rate 3. Release level 4 and rate 4. Level is the volume and starts at 0 and reaches the maximum at 99. Rate is the speed to get from one level to the next. 0 means here also 0 speed and 99 is maximum speed. Here we have to rethink. 99 corresponds to a vertical straight line because this is the fastest way to reach the set level. So we're talking about an attack time of zero. If we look at that in the graph, that's easy to understand. Since my rate 1 is greater than a vertical line, my signal is moving slower than the maximum speed. The slower it moves, the more time it takes to travel between two levels. The flatter the curve becomes and in this case, the longer the attack time. So we have a different approach here. While the classical ADSR determines how long a phase lasts and the speed results from this, we set the speed for a DX7 envelope and the resulting time. What at first sounds like another calculation that yields the same result has in practice both its pitfalls as well as interesting possibilities because the parameters influence each other so mutually. Unfortunately, they do so in a way that is incomprehensible, at least to me. And a lot depends on the pulse or gate that triggers the envelope. I use a pulse that is just fast enough to let the envelope drop to zero at the end. And I have activated the gated mode so that the entire envelope is traversed while the gate is active. We see a quasi-symmetric ADR or ASR envelope with exponential attack and release. I change this now until I have the values of the example below from the DX7 manual. As we can see in the upper graph, Level 4 defines both the final value and the initial value of the envelope. If I change rate 1, nothing happens. Even the subtle change of level 1 shows no difference, only from a value of 70. The envelope changes, but not as expected, because the value attack has not changed. For the example, we need to increase the parameter level 2 to 95 next. This creates a hold time after the attack time, the length of which determines the rate 2 parameter. Increasing rate 3 eliminates the hold time and increasing level 3 will give me an ASR envelope with a very steep release and short attack. Increasing rate 4 makes these values even shorter. Level 4 remains at 0, but the curve does not reach this value in the first place. This changes when level 2 is reduced to 50. The same happens when level 3 is reduced to 50, whereby a decay phase is clearly visible. Combining both gives a logarithmic release curve. 
a reduction from a rate 4 to 30 produces a logarithmic attack. At this point, at the latest, I give up a targeted envelope creation because other combinations result in completely different, unpredictable envelopes. At least for me, that's unpredictable. Fortunately, this envelope generator also has some unique functions. On the one hand, there are the buttons offset and scale, with which you can add the signal plus minus 10 or plus minus 1. These two options alone change the envelope immensely. VCA1 and 2, with the corresponding inputs and outputs, represent the two internal VCAs. So you can insert one or two audio signals directly and provide it with volume envelope output again. We already had the button gated at the beginning. The gate or trigger signal or even a pulse can trigger the envelope or a click on the corresponding button. The gate signal can then be tapped again at a pulse out output in order to trigger further modules. Finally, there is an output for the envelope. Phew, this was the DX7 envelope from NISTI that cost me strength, nerves and time. I know for sure we do not become friends, but he is too exhausting for me, which does not mean that he has not much potential and who is in the DX7 will certainly have his pleasure here. Anyway, I'm glad to be able to check it off and many weeks later I'll finally continue with episode 14. The complex DAHD envelope is also by NISTI and is based on the Buckler 281E or SASH USG, so primarily West Coast synthesis, if you absolutely have to put it in a draw. DAHD stands for Delay, Attack, Hold, Decay, so a completely different approach. Here we see very nicely the attack phase, the whole time at the highest point and the following decay up to the value 0. With delay the incoming trigger pulse is delayed and that can be at a time where the envelope is already active. More about that right now. The course can be defined fluently between linear and exponential. Scale adds again plus minus 1 and can be controlled by CV here. Trick is the usual trigger input and can also be triggered manually. Via the output chain trick out, the trigger signal can be passed on to other modules. Using corresponding buttons, different trigger modes can be selected and combined. Looped repeats the envelope automatically so no new trigger signal is needed. Hanged simulates a hanging node, meaning the signal stays at its maximum while this mode is active. All incoming triggers are ignored. Zero and busy play a big role in connection with the delay, as mentioned earlier. In zero mode, the envelope is always started at zero for an incoming trigger, regardless of the value of the envelope at that time. In busy mode, the trigger is only processed if the envelope is active at this time, i.e. greater than zero. Unfortunately, the last two modes are not controllable by CV. Too bad. Again, we have two internal VCA for direct processing of audio signals. Envelope chain in, out, lets you chain multiple envelopes, and that's great. This makes it possible to generate wonderfully complex envelopes. Finally, the module generates trigger signals at four different times. At the end of the delay, EOD, at the end of the attack phase, EOR, at the end of the hold phase, EOH, and end of circle, EOC, and all can be tapped individually. A very versatile and interesting envelope generator, not only for friends of West Coast Synthesis.
But again, sometimes it does not have to be complex. And here it comes, for example, the AD envelope of NISTI into play. We only have the two phases, attack and decay, which we both can control via CV. The gradient can be adjusted steplessly between linear and exponential again. And also the scale parameter has the same function here. Triggered is either via the corresponding input or manually by button. The loop mode is also available. At the end of the cycle, a trigger is output and the envelope can be tapped at the nth out output. Simple and effective. The newest member of the NISTI envelope generator family is the dual envelope, which replicates the Buckler 208 envelope. Gate is the input for a gate or trigger signal. The buttons below switch between sustained, gate, and transient, trigger. As usual, a trigger pulse at the output EOC can be tapped at the end of the cycle. The envelope is output at the output nth out. Three parameters, whose value ranges from 2 milliseconds to 10 seconds, determine this. Attack and decay are the known parameters. Duration is the duration the signal will remain at the value after the attack phase, which is basically a hold parameter. However, this only works in transient mode. All three parameters can also be controlled by CV. And you can also specify in the context menu whether the envelope should start at zero when re-triggering instead of the current value. If you do not have any experience with Buckler modules, you might be confused because you have to rethink because here the values are smaller if the slider is pushed up. But if you understand that, it's child's play to handle it. As a pure envelope generator, it is certainly not the first choice, but one must necessarily see the other approach of West Coast synthesis. And for this, it is an important element which can take various functions, e.g. also LFO or VCO. South Pole's Piste is also anything but a versatile envelope generator. In fact, barely less envelope is possible. But that's not his primary task. Drum Processor is under his name and according to the GitHub page, he was inspired by the Eurorack module Sky Spy Bustle. He has three entrances. At input in, an audio signal is introduced, which can be edited with the parameters drive, frag, and res. The names already indicated, this is a filter. As you would expect for an envelope generator, you will not hear anything without a trigger pulse. For this purpose, Pista has two identically constructed independent units. The trigger pulse is introduced into the associated input and its intensity is set with a gain control. This is the level from which the decay starts. This is controlled by the corresponding controller or by CV. Finally, the envelope can be tapped at nth out and the audio composite signal of both units at out. The mute input is used to mute in places when signals should not overlap, e.g. open hi-hat and closed hi-hat. However, since trigger signals occur in a wide variety of applications, I am sure that this module can do much more. Once again, experimenting is strongly recommended. The main task of Pulse also of South Pole, is to generate a gate signal from a trigger. This can also be synchronized with an external clock with a CLK input and also passed on to other modules via the CLK out output. However, this clock signal is processed by the parameters. 
so we already have a clock manipulator. Triggering is done via the input trick or manually via the corresponding button. The reset switch almost made me crazy. Because in spite of all attempts to discover his secrets, I could achieve neither a visual nor an acoustic signal change. I therefore assume that he currently has no function. Normally, I understand his task of starting the envelope from the very beginning when re-triggering. The repeat switch works as expected. Repeating the signal independently of an external trigger. And range determines the range of values in which the signal length lies. With the slider duration, this is set exactly. Delay defines the time between two trigger pulses or delays its execution by the value set here. Amplitude is the signal strength or volume. Slew is the time required to reach the value of the amplitude. With the value 0, you have an immediate increase from 0 to maximum and does a pulse. The further the slew control is turned to the right, the longer the signal takes to reach the maximum value and drop again to zero. The time that the maximum value is held becomes smaller and smaller so that the signal becomes a rectangle, a trapezoid and finally a triangle. If the slider is moved beyond this point, the triangle becomes flatter and the amplitude decreases. The envelope or the gate signal can be tapped at the output gate. Also at this module a trigger is generated at the end of the cycle, which can be tapped at the output EOC. The trapezoidal shape of the signal can be considered an attack hold decay envelope. Therefore, pulse can actually be used as an envelope generator. But its real purpose is different. It would be interesting to try out the module with a functioning reset function. But maybe it works and the mistake is mine. If so, please do not hesitate to inform me. I have already discussed the next two modules in detail in the episode about VCAs. Of course, I talk about a slap and spank of Wult. I refer to episode 13 at this point. However, slap has in the meantime received another mode, which I would like to mention here, of course. Gentle allows very long and soft envelopes making this versatile module even better. We will also see Trauma and Trauma 2 again elsewhere, namely when it comes to drum modules. But we find in both modules both inputs for external signals as well as dedicated envelope outputs. There are several options for use as envelope generator. Of course, we need a pulse in the gate input to trigger the envelope. With Trummer, this is for both areas of the module. Trummer 2 also has this common input, but additionally separate inputs for each area and is thus, of course, more versatile. The envelope signal is set with the already known by Spank parameters attack, hold and decay and tapped at the output env out. And that in both modules independently in each area. With a trummer, the envelope speed can still be selected by a switch between slow and fast. Trummer 2 has the same modes as spank, i.e. soft, hard and loop. With Trummer, each area has a controllable CV input, which can be assigned to one of the associated parameters by clicking in the field. 
Trauma 2 has the Volt Modulation Router, which allows four controllers to be assigned to four targets throughout the module. It gets extremely interesting if you introduce an external audio signal into one of the EXT inputs and pick it up at one of the outputs. Trummer has an input for each external area for an external signal and a common output. Trummer 2, Trummer 2 even has its own output per area. Each section has a knob called Source for both modules which allows you to choose between internal and external signals and of course this can also be set as a modulation destination. If only the external signal is selected, the modules work just like a slap and spank. So according to a VCA, the input signal is provided with a volume envelope. However, the noise range in both modules can also influence the input signal, which makes Trauma 2 sound very interesting because of the filter. If you now add the internal sound generator via the source control, you can generate much more with these modules than just drum sounds. Trauma 2 particularly invites you to experiment with using three different gate signals at the same time and also processing the audio signals differently. With these modules, we'll show once again what versatility means. And so episode 14 is finally in the box. Looking back, I have to say I did not think it would be that hard for me. But in the end, there were several factors that slowed me down. Hopefully everything will now be done at the usual pace. Nevertheless, I will not promise that I can deliver on a weekly basis. Just let yourself be surprised. Anyway, next I will deliver the promised update of the oscillators and then LFOs. As always, you'll find links to the main websites and also to the developers of the modules presented this time. And not to forget, many thanks to Andrew Belt and all the module developers without whom all this would not be possible. That's it from me. Take care. Servus.